What's up guys, Boost Auto here. And today we're showing you how to install our S-Series cab lights on 1999 to 2007 Ford Super Duty trucks. Let's get into it. Before we get into the install, let me tell you a little bit more about our cab lights. Introducing our S-Series cab lights, Boost Auto is the newest innovation offered with a wide range of customizable options. With our quality build and precision engineering, these cab lights are sure to set your build apart from the rest. Enhance visibility and add a premium touch to your vehicle's appearance with our exclusive features. Light up the sky with Boost Auto's S-Series cab lights. Option them out in our crisp white running light or our sleek amber running light that'll leave your build looking sharp. You can also option for our jaw-dropping startup sequence, adding personality to your truck from the start. And for the first time in the history of cab lights, we've developed groundbreaking technology from the ground up with our S-Series module. Our S-Series module enables turn signal functionality on our cab lights without the need for additional wires being run to them to add that function. Get them as a standard flashing signal or option for our premium sequential signal so your turn signal swipes instead of flashing. But here's the best part. Our cab lights are available as switchbacks, so they'll fit right in with all the other awesome Boost Auto products on your truck. Couple things to note before we jump into this install. First, the procedure outlined in this video is for 1999 to 2007 Ford F250 and F350 trucks that came equipped with factory cab lights. If you'd like to retrofit our S-Series cab lights on a vehicle that did not originally have cab lights or you own a different vehicle, head on over to our website at boostauto.com for the latest in fitment, availability, and purchase all we have to offer. Now, back to the install. Let's go over what's gonna come in your kit. Your kit is gonna come with five S-Series cab lights and the mounting hardware. And if you option for turn signal functionality, you're also gonna receive our S-Series module and the wiring kit that comes with it. We'll talk about that later. Your kit will also come with five of these cab light adapters, one for each of our S-Series cab lights. This end of the adapter is gonna go into your factory cab light harness. And this end of the adapter is gonna go into your S-Series cab lights. Now before you go about mounting your cab lights, it's important to know, our cab lights have a designated location and they have a designated spot that they have to go in. Number one is closest to your passenger mirror. It goes two, three, four, and five being closest to your driver mirror. It's important that these get mounted in their proper location for proper functionality. Follow the on-screen callout for the proper mounting location. On the screen, you're gonna see the tools required for this installation. Before we go and disconnect our battery, we're going to want to do a couple things to make our lives a little bit easier. First, we're going to want to make sure our seats are all the way back so we have enough room on the inside when we're working. And then two, we're going to want to move our sunroof all the way back if you have one. It's going to make our lives a lot easier when putting our cab lights on. Now with that out of the way, we can disconnect our batteries. If you have an auxiliary battery, disconnect it at this time too. Now we're going to be lowering our headliner to gain access to our cab lights. There's a few components we're going to have to remove to drop the headliner. The roof console, the sun visor, the grab handle, the A-pillar trim panel. We're going to start by removing the roof console. Let's get into it. So there are two tabs up top and two tabs in the bottom that are holding this plastic console in place. You can use a trim tool to work your way around, popping them loose, but for this one it makes more sense just to Work your fingers in, get it to pop, and then work around to the bottom. Now be careful with this because there are connectors on the bottom or in the back of here, but you still have these connectors, these little tabs that can pop out. All you gotta do is to pull and then just work them out. We're gonna keep them on the back of here just so we don't lose track of them. And this is where we're gonna go when reinstalling anyway, so saves us some time. So disconnect the roof console. You have to pop this out and then we are going to do the, undo this latch here. We can set this aside. Now we're removing the sun visor. There's two parts we need to take off, the support and the base. We're gonna be working on the support for right now. So to remove the support, remove the screw in here. Remove the two screws at the base of the sun visor. Some sun visors might have a connector here. We're gonna have to detach this by pushing in and then we get to remove our sun visor now. Now we're gonna be removing our passenger grab handle. Now using a pick, we can go in, pry the covers out of place. So now we're gonna remove our A-pillar trim panel cover. To do this, we're gonna take these covers off of the bolts here to reveal the bolts underneath. And then once those are loose and off, we can just take our A-pillar off.
Now pull this weather stripping back. This is gonna allow us to remove the A-pillar trim panel. Now our final step on the passenger side is this clip here. Take your trim tool, stick it in there, and just pop it out. Now we're gonna repeat the same steps we did on the passenger side, on the driver's side. Now that your driver's side matches your passenger side, there's one last thing we have to do before we can partially drop the headliner. We have to remove this weather stripping around the sunroof. Now this is obviously if you have a sunroof. If you don't have a sunroof, there will not be any weather stripping to remove and you can skip ahead. But if you do, all you have to do is just pull back near the middle and then just slowly work your way around the edges. Now that that's out of the way, we can drop our headliner. Be sure to support the headliner for the entire duration it's dropped so it remains in place while you're removing your factory cab lights and installing your new S-Series cab lights. Now we're going to be removing our factory cab lights. As you can see from the bottom, there's a connector and two nuts holding it on. First, we're going to remove the connector, then undo the nuts and remove our cab light. With the nuts off, we can go ahead and take this guy out. The rest of them come out in the exact same manner, so we can go ahead and do that right now. Before you install your cab lights, you're gonna to wanna to wipe down the surface of your roof with your preferred cleaner. To make sure that our cab light gasket makes proper contact. On the passenger side of the vehicle, we're gonna install cab light number one. All you gotta to do to install is guide the two posts in and then tighten your eight millimeter nuts on the bottom. Our gaskets are designed for the nuts to be snugged up by hand, which creates a watertight seal for our cab lights without needing to use any silicone or adhesive. So there's no need to over tighten the nuts. And simply hand tightening will get the job done. To plug in your cab lights, all you have to do is put your adapters in between the factory harness and your S-Series cab lights. Now we can go ahead and install the rest of our cab lights in the same manner as we did with this one. Remember, follow the on-screen callouts to determine proper mounting location and be sure to hand tighten. Alright guys, with your cab lights now mounted, if you optioned for running light only, all you have left to do is to reinstall your headliner and then reconnect your batteries. But if you optioned for turn signal functionality, which we think you should, it looks really cool, we're going to show you how to install your S-Series module now. This is our S-Series module. It has an input side and an output side. This blue wire is the wire that's actually going to go up to your cab lights. This black wire is going to get taped out of the way as it's not required for this installation. This connector here is a four pin connector. It's where your module is going to receive running light, left and right hand turn signal from. This two pin connector here is going to be your power and ground that actually powers the module. All right guys, now we're going to be installing our S-Series module. We're over here on the passenger side of the vehicle. We're going to be intercepting our cab light wire on the A-pillar. We're going to run our wires down the dash. So to do that, we need to remove these two panels. Let's get into it. There's a couple clips. Once you get one up, you can just work your hands through, pop it up. Now just set this out of the way. And there's one trim clip on this kick panel here that you have to remove before you can pop the panel out. We're here on the passenger side of the A-pillar, over here. We're gonna be intercepting our wires right around here. Right now, we're gonna use a trim tool and we're gonna pop this clip out. We're gonna be cutting this tape off here to reveal our wires. With your loom now cut open, locate this brown wire. It's very important that you locate a solid brown wire. No tracers, no other markings, just solid brown. Once you've found this wire, get a couple inches of room and I'll cut in the middle of it. And once you've cut the wire, take it and strip both ends of it. Now we're gonna take our S-Series module we're gonna locate our blue wire. We're gonna crimp this onto the wire going up. And install another butt connector on the other end of the wire that we cut. Now we're gonna plug in our four pin connector into our S-Series module. Now take your orange wire from the harness, give it about eight to 10 inches of length and cut it. Now strip this end of the wire. 
Now install your orange wire onto the butt connector that we just installed. Now take your two pin connector supplied in your kit and plug it into the S-Series module. All right guys, now take your four remaining wires, your black and red wire for power and ground, and then your red and blue wire and red and green wire for their respective signals. Take those wires and tape them to a straightened out piece of metal. We're using a coat hanger. Now, once you've taped your wires, we're gonna feed them through our opening in our A-pillar. And we're gonna get them down to our kick panel area. Now with your four wires and the passenger kick panel, we're gonna route them over to the driver kick panel using the coat hanger. With our wires still attached to our coat hanger, we're gonna be passing it through the firewall and into the engine bay. This is under the driver area. You can see the brake pedal, the accelerator pedal, parking brake release, you can see all the stuff down here. We're gonna locate this grommet right here and we're gonna feed our coat hanger through into the engine bay. We're back here on the passenger side and we're gonna wrap things up in the kick panel area before we start our working under hood. Go ahead and install the kick panel, its trim clip, and then the door sill plate. All right guys, now that we have our wires through, we're getting ready to tap for signal at the headlights. Let's start by routing our wires closer to where they'll be hooked up. So, route the red and blue wire to the driver's side headlight. Then bring the red and green wire, which is right-hand turn signal, and the red and black wires for power and ground over to the passenger side of the engine bay. The red and green wire will go to the passenger side headlight area, and the red and black wires will go to the main battery. Now, removing the grill and the headlights to get to the park lamp connector is only required for 2005 through 2007 trucks. For all other trucks, the park lamp connector can be reached from the back of the housing without needing to remove the headlight. Our grill is held in by four bolts. Let's get to it. All right, now that the bolts are removed, there's five clips that are gonna hold this in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna tilt the grill back a little bit, take a longer flathead, and you, all you gotta do is go down in there and press down on them, and they should disengage. So now this is the back side of the grill, and these are the clips I was talking about. If you put your screwdriver right there and just press down, it'll pop out. There are four bolts that hold this headlight in. The top ones are super accessible and you shouldn't have any problem getting them. And the bottom ones, you can use an extension to reach from the front of the headlight. Once your headlight is removed, you'll be looking for a three pin park lamp connector located at the back of the housing in this general area. To remove it, press down on the tab and slide it out. All right guys, we can return back over to our wires and we can grab the red and blue wire. This is for driver signal. Let's route this over to the driver headlight now. Now we're working with the park lamp connector. This will always be a three pin connector located on the back of the headlight housing. Depending on the year of your truck, the connector may be in a slightly different location, but it will always be this three pin style connector located where your park lamp is. Okay, we're gonna look for pin three. With this tab pointing up, pin three is gonna be on your bottom. It's your turn signal feed. We're gonna install a T-tap here. We're gonna use a red one. Now we're gonna take our wire. We're gonna measure out some slack, cut it. Now we're gonna strip this wire. We're gonna take one of our spade terminals and crimp it into place. With that done, now we can plug in our spade terminal. We just installed our red and blue wire on our driver's headlight for left-hand turn signal. Now we need to install our red and green wire onto our passenger headlight for right-hand turn signal, following the same steps as the driver's headlight. Now we're reinstalling the park lamp connector. For trucks in the 1999 to 2004 year range, reconnecting this connector would conclude your signal tap. However, for 2005 through 2007 trucks, you'll have to reinstall your headlight. Let's do that now. And with our headlight back in place, we can reinstall our fasteners. With left and right hand signals tapped, we can install our grill. Make sure you line up all five trim clips at the bottom. And now with the clips in place, 
we can go ahead and put our four bolts back in. And with that, let's proceed to hook up power and ground at our main battery. All right, first we're gonna hook up our power, but to do this, we're gonna have to install an inline fuse. So we're gonna cut and strip this wire. Bring it around to the battery, give yourself enough room to work with, and make your cut. Strip the wire. Now grab your inline fuse included in your kit and crimp it down. Now grab your electrical multi-tool once again and strip this wire. Take your ring terminal, crimp it in place. Now we're actually gonna be hooking it up. Now attach your ring terminal on your positive. Now we're gonna do the same for our ground wire. Bring it over your negative terminal, cut it to length, strip the end of it, take your ring terminal included in your kit and crimp it on. Now we're gonna attach our negative terminal to the battery. So now with your S-Series cab lights installed, we can go ahead and start reinstalling our headliner. This vehicle has a sunroof. So we're gonna start by putting the sunroof weather stripping back on. When we're doing this, we're gonna make sure that the actual headliner is touching up against the plate here and we can put our weather stripping on and make sure it goes over both sides. So now that this is back in place, we're gonna go ahead with reinstalling our A-pillar trim panel cover. You're probably gonna be able to see it better from that side. And we're gonna rest our S-Series module along the A-pillar. Place your S-Series module here and tie it up to secure it in place. And now we can reinstall our trim panel. Now we're gonna start by threading in our four eight millimeter bolts. With our A-pillar trim panel cover in place, we're gonna go ahead and put on our grab handle. So now with our grab handle secure, we're gonna go ahead and install our sun visor. Now remember, if you have a power sun visor with lighting, you're gonna wanna make sure you plug this connector in and then you can go ahead and put your screws in. And now with that tight, all we have left to do is this one clip here. So now we're gonna be inserting our roof console. We gotta make sure we plug this in. And now that this is plugged in, we can make sure we clip that in place. Now when we're putting this back in, make sure that your clips are lined up properly. They're inserted in the right spots. And before you go and push one clip in, make sure the rest of your clips are all where they need to be. And to complete the reinstallation of our headliner on the passenger side, all we're gonna have to do is just line back up our weather stripping. And now with our passenger side wrapped up, we're gonna repeat the same steps on the driver's side for the A-pillar and the sun visor. Now, let's tie up our loose wires. That concludes this install. Thanks for watching. Thanks for choosing Boost Auto for your aftermarket accessory needs. The S-Series cab lights featured in this video can be purchased on our website at boostauto.com. We also offer a wide selection of products, parts, and accessories for trucks and SUVs that are sure to take your build to the next level. If you want to watch more videos just like this one and get notified when we release new products for your vehicle, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. And with that, it's Boost Auto signing off. Catch you in the next one.